Sean Salisbury, former NFL USC quarterback, host of the Sean Salisbury Show on Sports Talk 790 in Houston. Good morning, Sean. Uh, Dan, are, how are we doing, buddy? <laughs> how are you, my are, man? Are you a USC apologist today? I'm still stuck on the the dumbass fair catch call that the refs made. They got it wrong. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not an apologist, Dan. This isn't the last time they're going to lose this year. Mm -hmm. Well, they got Oregon still. Washington. Washington and UCLA. UCLA. Yeah, UCLA's got really good defense and team speed. Washington could score from the tailgate, you know, on Meet Friday on the Dan Patrick Show. And we know how good Oregon is. Dan, when you play offense like that, but can't get stops on defense at the most critical times, I'm not apologizing for them. I, I thought their defense would be better and Alex Grinch would have them better. They've lost physicality in the interior, and that's been going on for a minute. Mm -hmm. But you can't keep winning games 48-44. This won't be their last loss. And Utah always manhandles them physical, physically. And I think Kyle Whittingham, outside of Nick Saban, is the best college football coach on the planet. Yeah. yeah, high praise, but, you know, he's done a great job, and he's beaten yep. USC. I think that's what – Regularly. You know, four consecutive times there. But I'm watching the, the final drive, and, and maybe this is piling on Caleb Williams – but he's on the bench, and your defense is out there. Like, be involved. And it didn't feel like – I don't know. There's just an indifference there that it's, it's kind of strange. And I said this two weeks ago uh, as a friend of mine who's an NFL scout. He said, look, they're not a good team. Caleb Williams covers up a lot of this, but they're really not. If you look at the totality of the team, they're not threatening for a national championship. He said people think they are, and they're not. And he said, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up with four. It'll cover up for a lot of weaknesses. And it's not just defensively. I mean, they got some. But they also have some physical as far as domination weaknesses. He bails you out all the time, which when one guy's that good and it's the quarterback in a quarterback-driven league at every level now, high school, college, pro, we automatically think they're a great team. They're not a great team. They're a good team with a great talent. But I also know what you're talking about. I try to guard against Dan. I do because I think the guy's a special player. Mm -hmm. I try to guard against the disinterest look and the optics of does he care because remember, they used to say that about Eli Manning. Remember, Dan, the shoulder shrug, he doesn't care, wins two Super Bowls. So I'm, I'm trying not to be the guy, and I, but I, I, I'm with you. I'm thinking, man, is, 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 is he ready to move on? Is, this, is he bored with this, knowing that if he doesn't make a play, they can't win? And it's true. If he plays average, they just won't win. They won't even be in a game. So Do you I, think I don't he like could the shut optics it down? up. Could he, shut it, could he shut it down this season? Ooh. Gosh, I, I would hope that would, Dan, it, that would validate how people are, what people, what you're saying right now about the disinterest, not up on the sidelines. I know that's been his routine regularly, sitting there with his head back and looking up. So, um, and I'm not apologizing for him either. I don't like the optics of it, but I also know when the guy's been that good, what else am I going to complain about? Even though I'll try to find something with USC football, but he may be, Dan, if you'd asked that question a decade ago, we'd have looked at you like, what do you mean yeah. shut it down? Nobody shuts it down. Yeah. But we're at a time now, name, image, and likeness, protect that, or there's money, uh, first pick or second pick of the draft, whatever it might be. Maybe, Dan, I, 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 I'll tell you what, as a teammate, that would drive me friggin' crazy if it did, I, especially with the three games they got to play. Now, if it's a bad bowl game, you're going to leave, don't play in it. I get it. When I say bad, not a January 1 bowl game, I, I understand. But I hope he doesn't shut it down because that would validate what a lot of people want to believe that he's disinterested. Even though if he's disinterested, imagine how good a player he'd be if he was interested. But they're they're a decent team. They don't threaten anybody in the and there's three or four teams in the Pac-12 outside of him uh, carrying them that are better than the Trojans. Yeah, I got the odds to win the Heisman, and Caleb Williams is not in there anymore. J.J. Yep. McCarthy is tops. Then Michael Penix Jr., Jaden Daniels, Jordan Travis and Dylan Gabriel. And, Dan, you need that Heisman moment, right? Now, I think McCarthy – somebody had asked me yesterday and when I was talking to Fritzy last night, I, I, McCarthy, to me, is, is the number one choice as well. It was all Pac-12. Mm -hmm. Jaden Daniels has played well. But, again, they don't play defense. You start to look around the country and say, okay, well, then who is it? 
It's no longer the Pac-12. Bo Nix hanging around with the accuracy. Penix had his moment where he, I don't know if he lost it, but fell off a little bit against Arizona State. Drake May had his moment. Caleb Williams had his against Notre Dame. Moment meaning where they fall off. McCarthy hasn't had that yet, and he's going to get his Heisman moment when they play Ohio State in what will be a huge game and a few more. Mm. I like McCarthy as the number one choice. He protects the ball, and he kills you more ways than one. I actually think Michigan is as complete a team as we have in football right now, and that includes Georgia. Are they great? No, really good. I don't think we okay. have a great team. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that with, with Kirby Smart and the way they recruit and the way they develop and teach at Georgia, there's no doubt they're really good. But I still think offensively, I, I'm not sold yet that Georgia's that dominant, can go score 40 against a great defense, although I know how good they are and we know. And I think when you lose that many defensive players on Georgia, it's hard to overcome year after year. I don't think we have a great team in college football, and I think the eighth team in the country can win the national championship. I think Washington could go win the national title if played right. But as far as complete and really good and a quarterback can beat you more ways than one, Michigan's as good as we got in the country. Sean Salisbury, former NFL USC quarterback, host of the Sean Salisbury Show. You can hear that on Sports Talk 790 in Houston. The worst loss of the weekend, if I said the Bills against the Patriots, the Lions against the Ravens, other, who had the worst loss? I, I don't think it was the Lions because uh, this is about two or three of these I expected this year from them. They're good for this. You go and say, what are you doing? I think it was more impressive on Baltimore's side. And I also don't think it was the worst loss because I actually think Detroit can run away and hide in this division. But with Buffalo battling Miami, who got theirs from Philly last night, um, and we know Belichick's defense always shows up. I think that was the most impressive point. And I was doing a show yesterday, Dan. I, I, you know, when you're gambling or you're talking about point spreads, I thought New England would get inside the number. I just didn't think they'd beat them. But they were impressive. That was their best offensive performance as far as I'm concerned of Mac Jones protecting the ball. I'm going to go with Buffalo because Buffalo now validates what we keep thinking. Great talent. Uh, when are they going to close this out? When are they going to do what Kansas City does? When are they going to be New England when Brady was there? Where they got all this skill set, can they dominate you running it? Can they can they handle typical and constant success? I think that was it's tough to go to New England and win, but to me that was the one because that's going to be a much tighter division than the than the Detroit Lions in the uh, NFC North. It'll come down to the last week or two in 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 that division in the AFC East. The, uh, the NFC North will be won in early, in early December by the Lions. Explain to me how Travis Kelsey, you know what he's going to do, and they still couldn't stop him knowing what he was going to do. Right. How, I, how does that happen? <laughs> you know you're game planning for Travis Kelsey. Right. Yeah, Dad, what, what did the Belichick approach or anybody? I'm not letting your best beat me not name the quarterback. And guess what the best? Every week he beats you. And I think, you know, it helps that they got a play caller that knows how to deploy him and motion him and Andy Reid and put him in positions. The thing that's most baffling to me, and go back and look at like in the playoff game and that game against Buffalo when they were back and forth and in Super Bowls. Dan, I don't know why people give him such a free run off the line of scrimmage. You know how in basketball, like the, 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 the Bulls would bring in like Will Purdue, Luke, they have like three guys for six fouls, yet 18 to give. I don't know why we don't maul him at the line of scrimmage. Even in motion, I know you back off a little, but take your foul. Go clutch and grab. You cannot give him free reign. I want to make him work more at the line of scrimmage than I do in space. You give him in space, it's the old choice route. Okay, if they play an inside man, run away. Play an outside man, you run away inside in zone. Stretch the outside leverage of the zone and sit. And then Mahomes and him are just playing schoolyard. Even though it's designed well, it's like, Go down there to the car, make a left behind Dan's Mercedes, and stand there, and we'll throw it to you. And that's the way it works. But I don't get in professional sports how I don't care if you're doubling him like you do the gunner on the, or the, the you know, guy covering punts. You can't let the best player at his position in the world have free reign. And just when we think Kansas City's offense, eh, are they the same? Mahomes still goes and throws for 400 yards. You cannot let that guy. It'd be like saying, hey, let's give Derrick Henry in his prime when he's running. 40 carries and just open up a hole for him. You got to stop the team's best and make somebody else beat you. For some reason, I guess it's harder than, than we described because nobody seems to be able to do it. Help me understand what's going on with the Browns and Deshaun Watson. I don't know, Dan. I, I'm, I'm bothered by it, though. I'm bothered by it because I think winning teammates over matters, and I don't know how they feel in the locker room about him. I know from a distance, we speak of optics on Caleb Williams. 
the optics don't look good. The optics do not look good. I, I don't like it when a guy's pronounced fit and doesn't play. And then when he goes and plays, now I don't know how severely he was hurt and all that, but you could make the easy case that you say, well, he got paid, he got the bag, so he's taking time off and load management fits him like it does the NBA. It bothers him. I don't think Deshaun Watson's ever going to put his team in position to win a Super Bowl again. Um, I know why he's easy to root against if you're some people. He's an enormous talent, and the Browns are really good. But I like what P.J. Walker did. I, I don't know, and Dan, you know this. It gets to a certain point. If you're not running through a wall, running, jumping over a wall, or going around a wall for that guy, your quarterback, and maybe they still are, then you got a problem. And this team is a playoff team with Super Bowl aspirations. And, and I, I don't know what's going on, but there's a disconnect. Yeah. And I just don't know where it is. And if Deshaun Watson, I'll ask simply, does he still love playing football? That I don't know. And I don't know where the level of his pain tolerance is. It doesn't look good optics-wise, and especially when the guy who comes in is winning games for you. And they only owe him $190 million guaranteed yeah. the next three years, so that shouldn't mm -hmm. be a problem. No, he'll be okay. I mean, I mean, you know, but who's counting, Dan? Why? Yeah. What, I mean, who's keeping score, right? Yeah. <laughs> 190 I expect more million over the next yes, three years. Uh, right, and there's a good chance he may not be the one quarterback in him in February. He can get you to January. We still wonder if he can get you to February, but – there's got to be the, the, the passion and love for it. I always ask quarterbacks when they come to me young, I say to their parents, I say, does he love to play? He loves to play fine. And that exists all the way through to the end. And I'm assuming Deshaun loves to play, but there is some kind of disconnect yeah. and the optics look horrible. The, uh, you know, the brotherly shove, the push tush, um, it works. It works too well. And sometimes it feels like the extra point before they moved it back. Like, you know, it's boring. Automatic. Um, yep. can, if you're on the competition committee and they ask for your vote, is the push-tush in play next year? Uh, no, and here's why, Dan. Here's why my excuse would be if I was on that committee. Is one is, you know how we always say, hey, let's err on the side of protecting football <laughs> players. We want to protect them. Yet I can think of nothing worse for a quarterback other than getting hit in the back of the head blindside is having guys that outweigh you a thousand pounds pushing you from behind while the others are coming. And if they hit you high and you're getting pushed low, that old bend back, it's a blown knee waiting to happen. The first time a star blows out his knee, if it was Hertz or somebody else, that rule goes away. Hell, they'll have an emergency meeting to but, cancel but that. But Sean, the so, Eagles are choosing to do this. Right. That's you're exactly different. right. And the rules let them. So they got bulldozer behind them, pushing them. And they, but the second Jalen hurts, hey, man, my lower back feels like a disc went down into my hamstring. Then it'll change. But right now, the rule says go for it. And they're really damn good at it. But to me, it, I don't care if it's boring. Boring football sometimes wins games. We've seen that a lot. But when it comes to this, if you're actually erring on the side of protecting the player, which we do so often in this league, and overboard, maybe just maybe – that you would want to think about that too. But if you notice, Dan, the only time we really want to protect the players when it's a head shot, we don't really care about their knees or their lower back or their shoulders. We care about the head. But I hated the quarterback sneak anyway, because people are always flying at your head with that. Now you got people pushing people, pulling the whole thing. Yeah. I, I would say that that's not long for the NFL, but right now, if you're the Eagles, you do it well, use it. Why wouldn't you, if you're not afraid to. Thanks bud. Good to talk to you. Pre Appreciate you. Astros tonight, brother. Should be a good one, man. Can somebody get somebody out? That'd be nice at home. Can, Astros tonight. Can a home team win a game? There you go. Thanks, brother. I appreciate you. Sean Salisbury, former NFL USC quarterback.